Nurse Awesome. Let's talk about how to use the nursing process to study for um, pain medication. Wow, so this is the most common drug probably that you're going to give, um, and so it's important that you know how to do a good assessment on somebody that has a lot of pain. There are a lot of different drugs that you can use. You can use some non-opioids like aspirin, Tylenol, NSAIDs. You can use some opioids, obviously like Norco, morphine, Dilaudid. Uh, sometimes you'll have some adjuvant medications like Neurontin, uh, antidepressants, muscle relaxers. Sometimes also you'll have uh, things like Valium, Ketamine, Fentanyl. Um, those are also used uh, to try to control pain. <sighs> Remember, before you start to do anything with pain, pain is always what the patient says it is, always. So you can go into the room and look for things like, well, heart rate getting faster, blood pressure going up, sweaty, restless sort of thing that would indicate your patient's in pain. And if your patient's a chronic pain sufferer, you may not see any of those. So pain is what the patient says it is, all right? Your job is to keep them safe within the parameters that are set for you in regards to the specific pain medication. So when you're assessing a patient, it's the first step of the nursing process, that has pain, it's real important to establish a baseline of pain. Talk to them about that one through 10 scale. Um, ask them if they're willing to look at other options besides pain medication. Uh, can you look at maybe heat or cold? Can you move them around a little bit? Do they want some soothing music? Can you use some massage? Um, a lot of things can help with pain that are not medications. You need to find out if your patient's open to that before you start to do them. All right. The other thing that's really important is that you look for the cause of the pain. Um, that you communicate to the patient when you're assessing them that they may not be able to expect complete relief, but where you're going to get them to. Um, all of those are really important. So when you're assessing them, look for signs of their vitals that would say, hey, they're in a lot of pain. Heart rate increases, BP increases, they're sweaty, they're restless, they're guarding, they're moaning, they're kind of clenching their teeth. Those things would tell you that they're in pain. Um, also, um, assess for breathing is really important once you start to give medication because, you know, a lot of those um, opioid medications specifically work on that respiration, right? So, you know, you always need to sort of have some Narcan ready whenever you're going to give a pain medication. So we've assessed the patient, we've established their vitals, we've established a baseline of pain with them, we know what an acceptable number is for them. We also have chatted with them about what they can expect for pain relief, so we've set up some realistic expectations, and we've um, determined um, through chatting with them whether or not they're open to having some different sorts of pain relief, right? Next thing you're gonna do is use uh, nursing diagnoses for the particular pain, and these are pretty easy. You have some anxiety, acute pain, uh, impaired physical mobility, ineffective coping, risk for injury, falls, certainly if they have a lot of pain medication on board, altered mental status. So you need to make um, a plan based off of your diagnosis in order to keep your patients safe, right? So if they have altered mental status and you're giving them pain medication, you may need to reassess them more frequently because they may try to climb out of bed, they may try to remove their IVs. They may take their oxygen off. That's very important. Um, you also should probably make sure the bed is in the lowest position. If it has an alarm on it, you need to use that. You need to just check on them a little bit more frequently. And so your plan for someone that has altered mental status because they're taking um, dilated fentanyl could be very simple. Check on the patient more frequently. Monitor the bed alarm. Uh, make sure they're not confused, that sort of thing, right? Um, doesn't have to be fancy is what I'm getting at. Um, it can just be something very simple. It needs to be something that's very doable. So you've made your assessment, you've done your diagnosis, um, and based off of your diagnoses, you've made a plan for your patient. Now you're going to implement administration of that drug. Always use five rights when you're giving a pain medication, specifically, especially because pain medications can get patients in uh, trouble very quickly. Um, you want to make sure if this is a PCA pump that you've had another nurse actually look at the parameter that you've set. You want to make sure you didn't actually, you know, hit 10 milligrams per button push as opposed to one milligram, um, that sort of thing. 
You also want to make sure you check the respirations, make sure it's greater than 10, maybe 8, depending on your facility. Look at their level of consciousness um, before you give them their drug. If they were open to some other interventions, did you do those interventions first? Um, you want to look at the timing of the dose that's important here. Um, when you're giving someone pain medication, you really have to assess their respirations frequently. You really have to know the half-life of the medication that you're given. So make sure that you're studying that because they have a way of kind of building up in the system. Um, also, you want to create um, effective evaluation. You know, every single facility is a little bit different. My facility, within 30 minutes of giving a pain medication, you have to reassess what the pain level is and if it's been effective. Um, super big on pain control. Don't forget to have your Narcan ready. Sometimes people have a lot of pain. Um, true story from my own experience, one of my first really um, bad experiences with a pain patient that had a lot of pain from a really um, traumatic back surgery that they had. I had given them, uh, they were on a PCA pump of morphine. I was giving them some Q2 hour dilaudid for breakthrough pain. They were on a Xanaflex, a muscle relaxer that I had given them. I would given them a shot of Toradol, um, and this had been going on for like six hours where I was just kind of stacking medications every single time I could give them because they were in so much misery. They were just, you know, so restless, tossing around in bed. They wouldn't stay still. In this particular situation, they had a drain. They needed to stay flat. Um, so it was important to me that I control their pain as quickly as I could. Um, so I was going into the room with my last kind of ditch effort, which was Valium. I had no idea how else to control their pain, but I saw as a PRN medication that Valium was available. So I discussed it with another nurse that was sitting with me, and he said, don't give that Valium. And I said, oh, you know, why not? And he said, because she's had way too much. Her respirations are right on the cusp of being bad. If you give Valium, you're going to cause her to have respiratory arrest. So I didn't give the Valium. I continued to watch this patient go for like two hours. And finally, I was like, I'm going to give the Valium. My nurse friend was smart enough to go and grab some Narcan out of the um, medication Pixis and kind of stand next to my room while I was giving the Valium. Because sure enough, as soon as I gave the Valium, and I, mean, I gave like half a milligram and it was diluted in a 10 cc syringe. So I didn't give very much Valium. I began to push it very slowly, and it was maybe five seconds, not even a mil of that medication or that 10 cc syringe, and the patient just went <laughs> gray. I had to bag the patient. My friend nurse gave Narcan. The patient came back around, and the patient was fine, luckily, but that was a really hard lesson for me to learn. It's very important that you reassess people and that you do things that are not pain medication related to try to control their pain. All right, so I've blabbed on enough about this. Assessment um, in pain relief is really important. You need to establish a baseline first. You need to establish a baseline respiration, and you need to give them a realistic expectation of their pain control through your shift. Diagnosis, that's the easy part. Um, plan to do some things based off your diagnosis and then implement those things and don't forget to reevaluate what you've done. All right? Hopefully that's helped you a little bit with pain medication. This one's not too hard. It only takes you a couple times to do something kind of wonky and you're going to have it stuck in your brain forever. So if you have any more questions about using the nursing process uh, with pain medication, I want you to shoot me an email. I'm happy to chat with you about it. Until then, um, peace.